Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. The time has come for my ninja guide to Crystalline Conflict. A role that can be equally powerful and equally annoying. Ninja is one of the most versatile classes around, able to make plays in almost any situation. In this guide, we shall be going through action combos, strategies, strengths, and weaknesses, ending with a comparison against every other class. Hopefully today's video can help those of you who are new to ninja in understanding how much of a nuisance you can be to your enemies. Thanks for clicking on today's video, let's dive right into it. For combos, let us begin with the Aeolian Edge rotation. You do not want to over-rely on this rotation. The only time this will be your go-to is while waiting on your cooldowns, if you have burned through all of your shurikens, and to trigger off Dotan's secondary effect, Hollow Nozuchi. Keep distance and abuse range before the need to get in close. You can, however, double the effectiveness of this rotation. Using Bushin beforehand, your target will take the effect of each action twice, essentially leading to double damage. Speaking of Doton, this is one of my favorite abilities, and most ninjas overlook this ability, as it is much more high risk, high reward, and is a lot harder to pull off. In comparison to double stunning your target, I love using my teleporting Doton combo as part of the opening battle. Done right, players explode, here is a clip showing just how powerful Doton can be. For this combo, you activate the free mudra. Select Doton, then using my Shikuchi to target macro on screen, if done fast enough, the Doton will be placed at your new location. Having teleported to your target, you can now use the action Assassinate. Depending on the size of the group around you, you can then go into Mug followed by Goku Makyaku for more AoE and burn damage. You could also easily go into the Forked Raiju Stun, Mug followed by Fleeting Raiju. Essentially, the teleporting Doton is one amazing opener with countless follow-ups. It is very highly effective at forcing your targets to burn through their guards and their purifies. The Doton's second ability is Hollow Nozuchi. Hollow Nozuchi deals a burst of 3000 damage and applies heavy with each trigger. And thanks to the teleporting strat, triggering Nozuchi is very simple. Any ability under the weapon skill category. This is your Aeolian Edge combo, Fumar Shuriken, Forked and Fleeting Raiju, as well as your Assassinate, alongside Yoshio Ranyu and Goku Mikyaku, all of which trigger Nozuchi. Another great combo is the Forked Raiju into a weakened target. Follow up with the Saiten Tenshu Limit Break. Now should that target die, you can instantly follow up stun a second target with the Fleeting Raiju, followed once again by another Saiten Tenshu. The priest stun helps improve the success rate of landing the insta-kill on targets below 50% HP. We all have those moments where we Limit Break, only to see them recuperate after already being below the 50% requirement. Now we can't talk about combos without mentioning Bushin. This allows you to get super aggressive or super defensive. With the Aeolian Edge combo, you will deal the same damage twice per action, and is halved with Fumar Shuriken and Assassinate. If you use this before my teleporting Doton strat, the Assassinate goes from 12,000 to 18,000. Even from range, your Fumar Shurikens will now deal 9,000 rather than 6,000. Additionally, any target struck with Mug will receive 10% more damage on top of this. Bushin's effectiveness even matches the potency of your Forked and your Fleeting Raiju combo. So if you're looking to quickly burn down a target with just stun lock, a Bushin double stun combo makes for a great opener. And last up you have Hyuton and Mesui. Hyuton is amazing for outlasting targets and to also give chase. A 16,000 barrier is honestly insane for a DPS and players overlook the 25% bonus movement speed. Hyuton is a judgment call with honestly no downside. There is never really a wrong time to use this ability. Mesui is one of your least used abilities, but it does have its place. Mixed with Futon, in 1v1s you become unkillable. It helps to stall out objectives, and is oftentimes the life grip you need while waiting for your Shikuchi to come off cooldown. The ninja is rewarded for creativity. As fast as a situation can change, you as the ninja can adapt your combos just as fast. Your biggest mistake as a new ninja player is playing far too linear. Experiment with all the abilities and abuse those which work with your playstyle. Do not be afraid to break away from the group. Give chase to those attempting to flee. Stun lock troublesome targets. You can even use your Saiten Tenshu solely to shut down a tank. Never overcommit to any one combo. 
The ninja who can adapt as the game goes on can oftentimes be the carry the team needs. I begin the round as I do with any other. I check the enemy team for classes the ninja is rather strong against. I also look for players who were in previous games. For example, the dancer. Though it may sound harsh, they were the weakest player in every match I had, whether they were on my team or against. So my main goal, whenever possible, is to jump the dancer. If I can force a continuous 5v4, the opposing team cannot play full aggressive. The paladin also tends to play alone, as I saw in a previous game, so I only really need to worry about the Samurai's Limit Break and the Astro's strong support. As the ninja, being able to track less experienced players across matches gives you a major advantage. One of the ninja's biggest strengths is that once a scheme roll begins, it becomes easier for the ninja to make cheeky plays and to maintain that steamroll, straight shot winning matches from the very moment the objective unlocks. As soon as the match begins, I waste no time rushing to middle. Start by holding off the off angles. There is no need to make plays before the objective is unlocked. Instead, I am looking for my enemy to make the first move, and lucky enough the paladin dives right in. As he flees, I drop Doton in the general path of the objective. One, because this helps me against being dived, at any moment, I can trigger its secondary effect to apply heavy. And two, because I want to abuse that heavy effect, should the enemy team push the objective together. However, you will notice, the enemy team are burning through their guards and purifies, and are much more divided. And right now, I am not looking for any one target. I am simply throwing out damage, looking for the right moment. While chasing their reaper, I spot my primary target, the dancer holding far back. With the gap now closed, I am free to take out their weakest link. However, seeing the situation on point, I divide my attention away from the dancer, and using a well-timed teleporting assassinate, we snag a rapid kill on their reaper, who had unfortunately run into the legend that is our black mage, returning from their flank as he chased down their samurai in cold blood. Now here is where you can start being a lot more cheeky. We are two up, and yes, we want to kill them. However, I do not want to kill them too fast. If you spread out the kills, you create a staggered spawn. And the only way to fix a staggered spawn is for players to wait and group up, which in turn gives us free objective time. And from your own experiences, you no doubt know players do not like to group up, and instead rush in one by one, feeding us more limit break charge and keeping the stagger going. My goal has now changed from bullying the dancer, as he poses little to no threat, to instead slowly picking them off one by one. As we reach the first checkpoint, you will notice their reaper attempt to come in alone. He does realize his mistake and fall back. However, with the black mage by my side, and no enemy allies to speak of, I happily use my limit break to ensure the kill. I happily use my limit break to ensure the kill, which in turn brought us even more free objective time. And now you will witness how powerful staggering can be, as their samurai holds nothing back to dive in. Dropping Doton at my feet and mixing in some stuns, we make fast work of him, thanks to the secondary effect of Doton and help from the Black Mage, leaving the Paladin all alone to stall on the objective. And with Turbulence mere seconds away, and no one around to stun me, I take the Black Chocobo Feather. No need to waste guard when that could bite me later on, as the entire team have their limit breaks coming online. Thanks to a good hold from their paladin, the enemy team finally group up, as they rapidly dispatch two of my allies. My goal now is to stall, and attempt to force out limit breaks. The more they burn through now, the easier the recontest will be. With my black mage being on point once again, their reaper quickly drops. Shortly after, our sage returns to the battle. This gives me the time to elixir up, and places us back in a 4v4. I also expect no limit break from the dancer, as in the last four matches, he never used a single one, so now all I need to do is watch the samurai for Chiten, who instead I believe tried to ego limit break my black mage off in the distance. And once I fully heal, I go back in with a well placed Goka for AoE and burn damage, right into my limit break. The burn also helps to continually drop my target's health, increasing my chance to multi combo my limit break. Following this, only their reaper remains, who quickly fell. And with my last play, I place Dotum below their spawn. Should they rush out, I can trigger the heavy effect to prevent any recontest, which in the end was not needed, resulting in a smooth win.
As a ninja, you have powerful burst damage, both to single target and multiple target. You also have great mobility for your Shikuchi and your Raiju abilities. This movement also enables you to give chase to fleeing targets, as well as the ability to flee with great ease. Your wide array of abilities allow you to switch between close and far range, allowing you to adapt to any situation. You can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with almost every other class. In objective situations with grouped-up players, as a ninja with your AoE abilities, you can be rather oppressive to the enemy team. Ninjas are amazing at utilizing map advantages, using environmentals, and even the layout to outplay your enemies. Your limp break can even clear entire teams. Alongside your ability Hutan and Mesui, you can self-sustain far longer than most. Firstly, the ninja is a high-profile job. It is very common to be highly targeted throughout an entire match, as after a year, many players understand you should not let ninjas have free reign. Burning through abilities fast can leave you vulnerable. It can also leave you without follow-up, should your allies make an aggressive play. Should you get heavily focused, you will find you must burn through your abilities in order to survive. This stunts how much DPS output you can do. Your Limit Break's finisher requires a target to be 50% or lower. However, with ally healing and the server tick rate, it can be all too easy to mistime your Limit Break, landing you no kills and no Limit Break refund. As mobile as the ninja is, going too deep and overcommitting can easily leave you trapped. If your team is being picked off and you do not pay attention to this, you will end up trapped and slowly killed, in turn creating a staggered spawn. Let us start with the tanking lineup. The ninja against all tanks starts more as a neutral stalemate. Each can damage one another and both can stun lock the other. Without ally follow-up, it is uncommon to kill the tank. At the same time, it is uncommon for the tank to kill you. Both must either create an opening or wait for an opening to pile in and burn down the target. The advantage comes in once a ninja has their limit break. Once your limit break is ready, all tanks must play more defensive. If they drop below 50%, they are easy pickings. Against dragoons, you can struggle through their impressive burst damage, while at the same time, you can gain the advantage locking them out with crowd control. The best way to deal with a dragoon is to wait through their burst rotation and hold on to as many abilities as possible. During the dragoon's downtime, you then have the free reign to burn down that target. The monk is your nemesis when it comes to the melee roll. They can chase you just as much as you can chase them. The damage on both sides is fairly even, while both the ninja and the monks are capable of self-sustain. A battle between these two comes down to who makes the first mistake, or which player limit breaks first, or simply who is less stubborn and avoids the 1v1, waiting rather to dive the monk when the ally joins in. The Reaper is that one roll, given enough setup time, will explode any target regardless of their health. When dueling a Reaper, simply wait out their Arcane Crest. Should Arcane Crest break, the regen they receive can make the 1v1 long and drawn out. Take the hits and wait out the ability, then burn them down while they no longer have any regen. The Ninja vs Ninja is a hellish 1v1. You will both be burning through every action and all of your CC in an awkward mirror match. Playing against an opposing ninja is all about taking out their squishy targets. Ninjas require team presence to get away with many of their plays. The more you thin out their team, the easier it becomes to take out the opposing ninja. And lastly, the samurai. Outside of their annoying CC and their capability to give chase, their hard-hitting but slow rotation poses little threat. In fact, you can play around them so well Many Samurais might not even get their first limit break before the match is over. Bards, Dancers and Machinists, all of which make for prime diving targets. If you can bait out their crowd control and their knockbacks, ninjas gain all of the advantage, while at the same time you must respect their presence. These rolls can deal some amazing sudden burst damage. You need to both not allow them to sit back happily attacking uncontested, while also using the natural cover of the map when possible to close the gap and avoid unnecessary damage. The Machinist especially can set up an insta-kill combo if you don't pay close attention, and getting baited by the Bard can leave you in the middle of the enemy team under the effects of silence. For the DPS casters, you have Black Mage, Summoners and Red Mages. These are some of your main targets for dive and giving chase. Summoners pose little threat and you can force out every cooldown within seconds. Black Mages and Red Mages, however, while you can still burn them down rapidly, pose a great threat. Red Mages can silence you and deal insane damage with their melee rotation, and Black Mages are your crowd control nightmare. Good Black Mages will be shutting you down left and right. Against these, you want to take things slower and plan out your dive. I myself play as if I don't see them, 
I attack their allies while watching them burn off a few abilities while creeping closer and closer. Then catching them off guard, you begin a high burst rotation. Should they then retreat alone, instead of retreating into their team for help, a ninja then has all the free reign to out-sustain and claim the kills. And last up the supports, White Mage, Scholar, Astro and Sages. Again, these play very similar to going against casting DPS. You're aiming to bait out their crowd control or wait until they burn them on other targets. Doing so puts Ninja in a good spot where you can heavily out-DPS them. Your self-sustain allows you to easily take the fight inside of a Sage's limit break with a tick damage. You can escape the huge power boost an Astro can apply. I also find that the Ninja is amazing at forcing White Mages to waste their Imp and even their limit break, which is amazing seeing how oppressive a White Mage can be. For Scholars, you do want to respect their mummification, as that lowered healing can easily catch you off guard, and they can very easily bait you in too deep as a scholar can easily match your bonus movement speed by 25%. Always be ready to retreat against supports. If the 1v1 lasts too long, and their cooldowns come back online, they can very easily slowly turn the fight, and even divide your attention away from the rest of the match. There is no one way to win, and with a class like the Ninja, there is so much ground to cover on your capabilities. Hopefully this video has helped you understand what the Ninja is capable of. Happy hunting, and good luck with your Ninja escapades. Thanks for tuning in today's video, and I shall see you all in the next one.